How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm excellent. Uh, happy to have you on here. Oh, my pleasure, man. Glad to do it. Uh, I want to start by just saying that I feel that you're one of the more underrated personalities in mixed martial arts, uh, especially being on ESPN and being so valuable to us as a community. Well, I appreciate that very much. You know, uh, when we started MMA Live in April of 2008, you know, I think uh, a lot of people, especially the hardcore fans, were looking for sort of a mainstream boost. And, uh, you know, hopefully we've bridged that gap a little bit, and, and hopefully we've provided that. You know, I think internally – we still feel like there's a long way to go, and we haven't even, you know, scratched the surface in terms of where we want to take this thing. But uh, I appreciate you saying that, and, and we'll keep plugging forward, you know. Yeah, uh, really at this point, all we are is just a, a better time slot away from being re really mainstream like NFL Countdown, right? Yeah, I mean, I think our, our perfect scenario would be that we would have an afternoon time slot, you know, not unlike NFL Live. And, and we're not asking to be on five days a week, but maybe two or three days a week and really want to ramp up the post-fight coverage as well. Uh, I think that's some of the best work we do, those post-fight shows that follow UFC pay-per-views. I think the only regret is that, you know, we're only doing them three or four times a year. I think the sport certainly uh, deserves the coverage. And hopefully at one point in the not-too-distant future, we're, we're having a presence, you know, after after every major show, whether it's the UFC Strike Force or otherwise. Oh, great. With that said, how does it feel having just about every mixed martial arts fan, 18 years and older, jealous of your life? Well, you know, I, I appreciate you saying that. You know, it's nice to sit in the seat that I sit in for sure, and, and obviously being able to develop a lot of great relationships with the fighters is, is one of the best parts of the job. Uh, you know, a, a job's a job. I mean, a lot of people think I have a dream job, and I do, but, you know, it's a lot of nights and weekends, and, uh, you know, I think any job is a job. I certainly knew from a very young age that I wanted to, to do sports broadcasting for a living, and, and thankfully uh, I get to work for, for the worldwide leader in sports and covering, you know, mixed martial arts, the sport that I love, so I appreciate it, and, uh, you know, hopefully these young up-and-comers don't take my job anytime soon, you know? <laughs> yes, I definitely understand. So let's talk about the sport a little bit. I know you're in attendance for UFC 126. Do you have anything we could talk about? Anything special going on there? Yeah, just a great weekend for us. The 11th time we take an MMA live on the road. And really just seeing the organic reaction from John Jones, uh, learning shortly after his win over Ryan Bader that he was going to be awarded a title shot. There were some rumblings earlier in the week about a knee injury to Rashad Evans. I think we first got word of it maybe on Thursday. Uh, but out of respect to Rashad, we were certainly going to let the situation play out. And we didn't know at that point whether or not the knee injury was severe enough to actually force him out of the fight. Uh, but certainly John Jones's reaction is something that I won't soon forget. And really, you know, seeing Anderson Silva do that against Vitor Belfort, granted it was a close fight up until the knockout, but – it was amazing how much money in Las Vegas was put on Vitor Belfort. Um, you know, I think when we arrived in Vegas, Anderson was maybe minus 270. He closed about minus 205. So clearly the fans were there in support of Vitor, and certainly the people who were betting were betting on Vitor Belfort. And once again, Anderson Silva uh, shuts up another contender. So uh, two very seminal moments for the UFC that weekend. And, uh, and obviously a nice comeback for, for Forrest Griffin, completely dominating Rich Franklin. So uh, a lot of storylines as usual, and, and we were happy to be there and uh, I guess be a small part of a huge UFC weekend. Uh, yes, and all these great fights creates uh, a lot of title implications and nice pictures going forward for us to keep talking about. But after that Anderson fight, where do you stand on the Anderson-George St. Pierre fight and the treatment of Yushin Okami? How do you feel about all that? Well, you know, title shots in the UFC are never really guaranteed. I know they promise guys certain things, and it's frustrating for a guy like Yushin Okami when you win a number one contender's bout against a guy like Nate Marquardt to not get that immediate title shot. But, you know, there are small windows in which to make fights like Anderson Silva versus George St. Pierre. You need to strike when the iron's hot. And if there's a chance for them to make that fight after George St. Pierre fights and presumably beats Jake Shields, I think you need to strike if you're the UFC, even if, if Yushin Okami ends up being the loser in that equation. You know, I've always said a George St. Pierre Anderson Silva fight is going to be up to GSP. You know, Anderson Silva uh, is willing to take that fight tomorrow. Um, Dana White is certainly willing to put it together. The question really has always been, will George St. Pierre move up to middleweight? Uh, he said he would move up to 185 and stay there. Uh, so the question is, will he move up to 185 
after he fights Jake Shields. Of course, he's got to beat Jake Shields. Um, but I think it's up to GSP if he's willing to make the move. I think that you'll see the UFC will put that fight together in a hurry. Uh, it's going to be a great one. I'll certainly put all my money up for it. Fifty nine ninety nine. If they want to charge me a hundred dollars, I'll pay for that one. I'll, I'll buy it for my two brothers who are reluctant to order UFC pay per views. I don't. I don't care what I have to shell out. We've been talking about that fight for so long, um, and there are a lot of dream matchups in MMA, but that one will be on the top of my list until it happens. I absolutely one hundred percent agree. With all these fights behind us now, and this great stuff coming up forward. We have something huge on Saturday with the Strike Force Heavyweight Tournament. How do you feel about that? Well, it was interesting having spent the entire day today with Alistair Overeem. He was at ESPN, got to do a lot of different things. And, and you really get the sense that he is almost pleasantly surprised with, with the stateside response here in terms of how many people uh, not only came out for, for their little rally there uh, earlier in the week uh, in Manhattan, but... Also, just with the way ticket sales have gone, you really get the sense that this is going to be perhaps the biggest event in Strike Force history. You know, it's not happening at its unofficial home base in San Jose. It's happening here on the East Coast. And, and I think it's been really encouraging for Scott Coker, for Alistair Overeem, and for all the fighters to see the East Coast fight fans really get behind Strike Force. So I'm looking for this to be um, one of the bigger shows in Strike Force history and, and looking for Fedor Emelianenko to really bounce back from uh, the first legitimate loss in his career and, and get back in the win column and, and hopefully uh, setting up a fight with Alistair Overeem. It's, that's exactly what we've all been waiting for. I mean, it's years in the making, and now it's our opportunity, right? Yeah, that's another dream fight there, and I think that's actually a fight that Strike Force would entertain putting on pay-per-view. And I know maybe a lot of fans don't want to hear that, and they're just content seeing that fight on Showtime. But to me, uh, Alistair Overeem against Fedor Emelianenko is far and away the biggest fight that Strike Force can make. And if the tournament plays out that way, and you can actually make that fight, I think you know, not unlike GSP Anderson Silva, I think Strike Force needs to strike at that point, and, uh, and they need to put that fight on pay-per-view and, and really get a litmus test as to where they are. You know, I know Bellator and Strikeforce both would like to get in the pay-per-view game. That's how these promotions really make money at the end of the day. And, and if you're not going to try pay-per-view with Fedor against Overeem, I don't know that there would ever be a window to try. I know you're short on time and you have a lot, uh, a lot of places to be today. Can I get quick picks first round? Yeah, I mean, I like Alistair, excuse me, I like Fedor Emelianenko to get by, for, um, to get by Antonio Silva. I guess I just feel like even though Silva has a lot of weapons and, and is the bigger guy, uh, he left a lot to be desired in that fight against Mike Kyle. Getting in that type of trouble against really a light heavyweight, uh, doesn't bode well. And I just think that, that Fedor's desire, um, is, is really strong right now. And I just think that he wants to prove that he still does have two or three prime years left. On the other side, I really think it's a it's a pick 'em fight. I know Sergey Karatonov is a guy that a lot of people are picking as their tournament dark horse. Uh, he is a slight favorite against Andre Arlovsky. From talking to some of the journalists that caught up with Arlovsky earlier in the week, though, I feel as though a lot of people think that he is the guy um, that is just in a better place mentally. And I really think that Arlovsky is going to come through in this spot. I think his chin will hold up long enough to not. Uh, to not get knocked out, and I think he'll finish uh, his fellow Russian and get it done. Uh, I actually agree with you on that one, uh, even if he is the underdog. And I think he's fighting for his, his mixed martial arts career right now, and I don't know that I'm going out on a limb by saying that. Uh, I just feel like if he's ever going to be relevant in MMA again, uh, he needs to win this quarterfinal. That's not to say that he's going to go on and, and make a great run in this tournament, but... Uh, if any fighter's had a must-win or any fighter has a must-win in this tournament, um, you know, I think it's Arlovsky and certainly Fedor. So uh, I'm looking for them both, both of them to come through uh, in those spots on Saturday night. All right, great. Uh, let's move on to the next two fights. We have Josh Barnett and Brett Rogers and the Ream versus Fabricio Verdum. Yeah, well, in talking to Alistair today, he's just jonesing to avenge that loss by Kimura back in 2006 to Fabricio Verdum. Um, and this was the fight that he wanted, you know, whether it was going to be in defense of his title or in this tournament, this was the fight that Alistair Overeem wanted, asking you shall receive, he's going to get it. And I just think Overeem is just a completely different animal uh, than he has been in the past, and there's a reason why he hasn't lost since 2007. So I like Alistair Overeem, and, you know, I asked him today, uh, you know, any concerns about your cardio uh, if this thing goes into a, a second or a third round since, you know, you haven't 
uh, been out of the first round in nine fights, and he said, it's not making it out of the first round. Don't worry about that. So uh, cardio shouldn't be an issue. I like the Ream, um, given his conviction by first-round knockout. And on the other side, you know, it's a pretty interesting fight. I really like Brett Rogers as a fighter, huge guy. Um, you know, I've met a lot of heavyweights in my day, and I don't know that anybody, you know, broke my hand with their handshake as much as Brett Rogers did. Just has that natural, you know, what we call dad strength. You wonder if he would be an ox if he never lifted a weight. Um, and I was very disappointed, quite frankly, in his performance against Alistair Overeem. All of that being said, I just think uh, Josh Barnett has a huge experience advantage, very savvy fighter. I also think he's just in a very good way right now. Um, and, you know, I think maybe Rogers might be more competitive than the odds makers are giving him credit for, but I do eventually like Josh Barnett uh, to get the win by TKO. All right, all right. Uh... So that gives us the whole first round, and I think uh, we might have to check back in with you for the second round. And now I just have one more question for you as an ESPN fan, a sports fan, and just a, a guy in general. I've heard some very crazy stories about the guys at ESPN, whether it's out at night having a good time or at the gym there that you guys have. Do you have any juicy details you want to leak to us right now? You know, I always said if I left ESPN and wrote a book, you know, Confessions of an ESPN Insider, I, I would do pretty well for myself. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of stories, but, you know, these people are human beings uh, like you and I, Corey, and, and that's what it comes down to. You know, some of them uh, party more than others. Some of them uh, are just intense, you know, uh, as intense about their, their personal lives as they are about their jobs. And, you know, I think we all have uh, – we all have some skeletons in the closet. You know, um, anecdotally, I mean, I think my best experiences are just some of the stuff, um, you know, off the air when it comes to MMA Live, just some of the uh, the comedy that ensues when, when the mics aren't hot and we're just, you know, screwing around at a pre-production meeting, stuff like that. But uh, nothing too juicy and certainly don't want to uh, get fired with this interview. So uh, <laughs> it's fun. You know, I, it's a great place to work. And, uh you know, uh, as an MMA guy, uh, it's been fun to sort of pave the way as far as ESPN is concerned. And, and I hope when we're doing an interview 10 years from now that, you know, I'm still working for, for the worldwide leader in sports. I, I wouldn't have it any other way. All right. Got to respect that and appreciate the stories. With all that said, I want to thank you. Big, big thank you. Can our fans find you? Where can they find you? I appreciate it. You can always find me on Twitter. It's uh, John, J-O-N underscore A-N-I-K. Uh, also do a weekly chat for you every Wednesday at 1 o'clock on ESPN.com. We take your questions for at least an hour. And then, of course, MMA Live on ESPN2. Um, you can check the schedule at ESPN.com, but we're on most Friday nights, uh, midnight Eastern, 9 Pacific on ESPN2. All right, John. Thank you so much. We look forward to talking to you again soon, and hope you enjoy the card this Saturday. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, John Anik, MMA Live. Thanks, John. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You too.